All right, I need to do a video to alert people to what is going on here in Maine, the northern part of Maine. Um, I'm in the town of Patton, right on the main road here, an older historical house where I run this ministry that I have. And there is a company known as Wolfton that wants to mine just north of us here, a few miles to the north of us. And I also own property in an area that's not too far from where they're going to be mining, literally within walking distance, essentially. And Wolfton is acting like there's nobody in this area and everybody's for what they're doing. And the few people that are here, it's not really permanent and whatever else. Um, not true. And uh, here's the article from the, uh, what is this, the Press Herald here, Portland, uh, Portland, that talks about going through all this different stuff here. <clears throat> and you can go to the article and read it. But uh, a lot of people are, are falling for the lies and the propaganda of the man who's in control of this whole thing, this Ronald uh, Little guy here. And I'm going to show you some shocking statements that this man makes in this Metals Investor Forum. This is October 5th, 2018. Uh, again, he's coming out and, oh, we're just going to do a really good job and we're, we're going to be real careful with the environment. That's not what he's telling the investors. Right. Very important. Please, if you care anything at all about the beauty of northern Maine here, the Appalachian Trail starts right over that way in Baxter State Park, Mount Katahdin. There's a lot of uh, Mount Chase that's just to the north of us here. Uh, another very beautiful area where you can hike. These people have plans for Mount Chase. Not just Pickett Mountain where they own the land, but uh, Mount Chase as well. I'm going to show you the proof. And uh, if you care about the beauty of northern Maine, uh, you need to be very aware of this whole thing and you need to speak out very harshly towards this organization, this Wolfton. Um, very bad organization that's trying to come here and not just mine here, but all throughout the state. And I'm going to show you the proof. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip ahead here to about three minutes and about 56 seconds. Right there is fine. And he is going to make a statement here. Uh, he says about him and all these guys here are going to, they're out to make this uh, a much bigger company. They've changed ownership multiple times. They're always operating in the red. They're, they're a junior mining company if you do the research. But they want to make it a much bigger company. They have big plans. Okay, here we go. So there's a bit of a, a known commodity there, but it's a very small tight board. We're all seasoned guys and we're all out to make this a much bigger company. So there you heard it. He's out to make it a much bigger company. Um, in other words, they're looking for investors and everything else. They want to make a lot of money off of this thing. When you get people in making, wanting to make a lot of money, they're going to cut corners. And you're going to hear him actually say it here in just a few minutes here, or just a few seconds, actually. Uh, listen to what he says. So taking into the state of Maine, we're just off the highway, about three miles off Highway 11. We're only about 40 minutes from the Canadian border. This is such high grade, we think we can mine it with a portal underground and even ship it to New Brunswick. Okay, and listen to what he says. Portal, portal, portal underground and even ship it to New Brunswick. Listen to what he says next. If we want a quick and dirty approach or a cheaper approach. If we want a quick and dirty approach or a cheaper approach. Wait, I thought that they were going to do it in this really green very make sure that there's no pollution or whatever. Oh, if we want to do it quick and dirty or a cheaper approach, we can just ship it over to New Brunswick quick. Not even an American company, by the way, I'd like to add. But they're going to come here to the to northern Maine and oh if we just want to make it cheap and quick, we can do that. Disgusting. We'll play a little bit more here. Uh, we're only 15 miles from a, a large rail siding, so we could put that into a hopper and rail it all the way up to New York, where we know there's lots of capacity at a current operating zinc mine there as well. So we can build this thing as cheap as ships, or we can... We can build this thing as cheap as, I guess he said ships. We can build it cheap. You do this thing quick. And yet he'll say to 
all the local people here and everything else. Oh, we're going to it's going to be the best, most green mine. You don't have to worry about it. It won't be no there will be no pollution or anything else. We're really going to do it right. And yet he's telling his investors here, oh, we can make this thing, we can have make it happen cheap. Certainly, if we find another lens to take this from three to maybe five million tons, we'd probably put a concentrator in ourselves. This is the geological schematic to show you where we sit. The, the package of volcanics, which are about 450 million years old, extends right from Newfoundland all the way through the Appalachians. And uh, you can see the red star where we're uh, located in Maine. Uh, Bald Mountain was something chatted about for years. It would be a, a large open pit scenario, but... Be a large open pit scenario? Uh, no, that's illegal. Let me show you this article here, coming down here. Ron Little, CEO of Wolfton Resources, said rezoning is the first step before the company decides whether to move forward with the more extensive and costly work needed to apply for actual mining permits. You can do it cheap if you want, though. Little estimated it would be at least four or five years before mining work could begin at the site. If approved for rezoning, the company would ha then have to receive permits from the Maine Department of Environmental Protection under the as yet unused mining laws. We are the first company to test a new code, and we feel like we are the company to educate the public about mining, Little said in an interview Monday. Monday, not a lot of mining has been done in Maine, and the technology has changed over the past 30 to 40 years. Nonetheless, the proposal is highly likely to encounter opposition from environmental and outdoor recreation groups, like people that live here, who believe large-scale mining poses pollution risks to Maine's lakes, streams, rivers, and groundwater reserves. It does. Geologists have long known about a sizable sulfide deposit, originally dubbed the Mount Chase Deposit, containing zinc, lead, copper, and silver, but there have never been any commercial mining attempts at the site, due in part to pre-2017 regulations that made metal mining all but impossible in Maine. In the rezoning application, the company said the, plans, the plan is to use underground drilling and blasting on the rock to fragment it to a manageable size before bringing the materials up to the surface. The mined materials will then be crushed, milled, and fed into an on-site concentrator capable of pulverizing up to 1,000 tons a day. Yeah, that's going to be nice for those of us that actually live here. You know, uh, dynamiting and things like that, blasting, drilling and blasting underground. All that will be real good for us. And I'm sure it won't affect our aquifer at all and our spring water that we, you know, count on for survival. Valuable minerals will then be removed from the resulting fine dust and sent it to an out-of-state smelter refinement for refinement. The non-valuable material known as tailings will either be redeposited underground as backfill or turned into a toothpaste-like substance to be processed at a tailings management facility. You know, these tailings there have toxic chemicals. Management of these tailings, of those tailings was a key sticking point of the 2017 mining regulations that sharply divided Maine's environmental community following years of protracted debate and regulatory gridlock. Um, <clears throat> supporters of the 2017 law contend it provides strong protections against pollution by, among other things, prohibiting large open pit mines and the underwater storage of mine waste. Prohibiting large open pit mines. Let me just show you real quickly what an open pit mine is. This is an open pit mine. Open pit mines. And that's what they want to do to Bald Mountain. Bald Mountain right here. Beautiful area of northern Maine back in the wilderness areas and things like that you can climb up to the top of it but they want to well you'll see here in just a minute um, critics said the law did not uh, go far enough however to protect groundwater and nearby surface waters from the acidic runoff that can result from metallic mining and sulfide deposits <clears throat> that's what these people want to do and you heard from Ron Little, the president of Wolfton, that they can do this thing cheap. Cheap and dirty approach. What are their plans for Bald Mountain? Let's listen. But 
currently the new mining code in Maine has banned open pit mining. They're very worried about acid generation and I think once they see a modern mine, potentially ours up and running, I think 20 years from now that restriction will likely come off. Did you get that? We can mine we, we want to be able to get in here and do this, and as soon as they see us, what we're doing, then in, maybe in 20 years, we can get rid of this open pit mine restriction. So you want to take Bald Mountain back in here and have it look like this? And that's acceptable. That's okay. Uh, people of Maine and anybody out there who's concerned about environmental destruction, this thing has to be stopped. It's terrible especially if you live in this area. No amount of money is worth this. People have come here to Mount Chase and Patton for the wildlife, the beauty of nature. <laughs> Unreal. Just absolute corruption. But let's continue to watch a little bit more of this. You aren't going to believe some of the other things that this guy says. So we picked up a property that's about 7,000 acres in size. We own it outright. There's uh, a small royalty to Altius, who helped finance the project. They spent four million on a 1.35 percent royalty, and they can take that to 1.9 for another seven million. They also invested about two million, so they own 15 percent of the stock. And we're currently lumbering this property. We we hope to harvest about 250 million U.S. net to us on an annual basis and that will still maintain the roughly five million US in timber value for the project. Uh, now the property itself sits in a belt that's about 30 kilometers long which is the magenta colored belt here. This is the property in the middle. We have recently flown a large airborne survey, a VTEM survey. All the ground here is held and owned by private companies hence why we bought the permit in the first place. And we know our neighbors, we're, we're currently investigating many targets that we identified. And, you know, if we feel necessary to uh, drill some of these targets, we'll naturally step out and offer up some kind of a joint venture agreement with our neighbors. Yeah, joint venture agreement with his neighbors. Okay, let me, let me maximize this so you can see where this thing is, what all it covers. Get a good high resolution here so you can see it. Okay. Right here is where they're currently at, right? What's this right here? Hmm. Well, if you're not from the area, you wouldn't understand what that is. That's Upper and Lower Shin Pond. Upper and Lower Shin Pond. This is also Mount Chase is over in here. So they're looking to also do Mount Chase. Mine in Mount Chase. Not just Pickett Mountain but Bald Mountain, make it into an open pit, and also this whole area is going to be mine here. That's what they're looking to do. Absolutely disgusting. You see, what's the big deal about Mount Chase? Well, let me show you. Here's Upper and Lower Shin Pond. If you can see, let me zoom back out here. If you, if you can see, uh, where's the thing at? Right there. Do it this way. You see the different lakes, the three lakes there, the one that looks kind of like a fish right there, and then you have these two down there, right? You see it right here? This is the spot right here. So let's look at the upper and lower Shin Pond. Oh, hmm, Shin Pond Village Campground in here. How about all the houses? All the nice homes along Shin Pond. I'm sure they won't mind if this lake becomes poisoned from mining. All the beautiful homes along here, all the people that come up for vacation to see wildlife. All the nice houses. Back in through there on the other side of the lake. It's just lower Shin Pond. Doesn't matter to Wolfton, apparently. Very few people up here in the area, they say. Let's go over here and just show some more. Look at all the houses. It 
Doesn't matter. All the people in the area here. The fact that uh, Mount Chase was founded in, I think, 1840. Small details. Uh, these people can move if they need to, if we destroy the environment. And, uh, you know, investors from outside of this area can just, oh, we need this mine. We have to have this mine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Real nice. And again, this is the upper shin pond now. All along there. But hey, we'll just go ahead and come in there and take all that stuff. And then he says something here, this one. Let me go ahead to 9 minutes and 50 seconds here where he talks about the native people here, the indigenous people of Maine. Um, here he says about the Pickett Mountain Summary, supportive government, excellent community support. You're not getting it from me guy's lying. He's totally lying. Uh, you're not having excellent community support. They're coming in, they're giving money to the local government officials here in town and things. Oh, well, you know, we'll just kind of look the other way from what I've been hearing. Just disgusting. Um, hopefully I'm wrong on that. Hopefully there's some people in the government here that have enough sense to see what this could do to this area. But uh, listen to what he says here about no native issues. Two, we've got a proactive government and a great new code. And second, we're close to infrastructure. And anybody out there that has the same grade as we do, they don't have that close to infrastructure. And often they'll have native issues if it's in Canada. We have no native issues whatsoever. Again, we own the land. And because we're lumbering, we've already, we're putting in roads and cutting trees and we're doing everything that takes you usually years to do when you're trying. Okay, uh, no native issues. No issues with the uh, um, native people. Well, that's funny because right here you have the uh, NRCM environment here in Maine. Um, Natural Resource Council, Council of Maine, I think is what it stands for. And here you have uh, right here Daniel Kuzniers, Water Resources Manager for the Penobscot Nation. And then down here, Sherry Venno environmental planner for the Holton Band of Maliseets. I thought that they didn't have any issues with native people. And yet you have two representatives of uh, native people, indigenous people, tribes here in Maine, and they're both saying, we don't want this in here. We don't want this in our state. You can watch this video. Okay, this is February 3rd of 2021. We don't have any issues with the native people. He's a liar. But uh, another shocking thing in another video here, Metals Investor Forum, um, Ron Little here, he says around uh, 5 minutes and 20 seconds, he actually admits to trespassing on people's property, private property, to see if it's good mining area and whatever else. Let's listen to this. All at 25 kilometer belt, you know, it doesn't take long because of the road network. To, to run a bunch of lines, particularly now that we've flown the area, we can focus in on a few targets. And it's it's uh, the nice thing about Maine is there's really a, a no trespassing law. You can go anywhere, and it's at your own risk. So it's quite acceptable to be driving across somebody else's plot of land. And you know, if, if we're assuming too, you you know, you take a grub hole and you dig a little hole, it's not upsetting anybody. So. You can get an idea of what's there before you have to spend a lot of time and money, you know, drilling a hole, etc. <laughs> so you just kind of go into the areas that aren't really your land and you can just kind of, you know, dig a, take a little grub hoe and dig a little hole and just get an idea of what's on their land. You see why this has to be stopped? It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. They're not going to stop with Pickett Mountain. They're going to make hopefully in 20 years we can make Bald Mountain into an open pit. Okay, it's going to destroy this area. This beautiful area with pure water and springs and things up here. What are those of us that live here? What are we supposed to do? It's absolutely horrible. Um, and again, if you don't know who I am, I'm a preacher, a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'd like to share two scriptures with you. Um, 
Revelation chapter 11 verse 18, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great. And look at this, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Yes, God does take it very serious when people like this man right here and his company come in and say, we can do this thing cheap. We can do it uh, the, the quick and dirty approach, his exact words. Um, God has a problem with that. And another verse of scripture which ties in perfectly with this whole system here is 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. The Bible says here, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Um, you come up into this area here, this beautiful area, some beautiful homes, beautiful places to hike. Right there, Bald Mountain, it's going to be a huge open pit. Mount Chase down in here. It just We're just going to drill all of it and destroy it destroy the aquifer in the area and everything else just absolutely unacceptable there's no reason for this oh well it'll bring jobs and and whatever else and think all the excuses that they come up with you have no excuse to destroy what God has created and if you do you will stand before God um, but until then I'm going to fight this thing it is horrible to think of and I'm uh, please share this video with as many people as you know um, if you are in the state of Maine and you are here for the natural beauty, um, then please share this with other people. Let other people know about this. Um, it's very important that this gets stopped before they start this whole thing. Um, that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.